try that again. It's Saturday. How many of y'all ready for the 1836? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I am too. It is an honor for us to have come on our ranch, and we sure work hard to put this event on. We hope you have a good time. We hope you come back year after year. This is an awesome deal. It's an awesome part of Texas history that we present. We sure hope you enjoy. Like I said earlier, tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock a.m., Trail the Prize Cowboy Church will be doing their church service on the barn. Brother Mark Norman is going to be on site bringing the message. Please come. Please attend that service at 10 o'clock a.m. So without further ado, before we begin this awesome event, let us all remove the stand. I'm going to bring up Brother Mark Norman. Father God, we come to you today, hearts full of joy, excited to be here. It's the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask you to watch over us, be with us, bless us, Lord, and let us just have a great day in Western Heritage Fellowship. Lord, of the Texas Revolution on, talk about each one. We're gonna bring on the Lone Star flag of Texas. After that, we're gonna bring on the United States flag. It's gonna post up. We're gonna sing the national anthem. We're gonna pick those flags. So just be aware, the Lord's in the control. Pretty awesome sight right there, that mountain howitzer. Played a battle road. In the war of the Northern Aggression, also in the cover there. Go ahead and do that. That's good. That's pretty good. Again, like this, you can get your hand as well. Hugh Shelton got his set of mules pulling that second gun on the tail end there. Now, the uh, Ford, just one of only six in existence in the United States today, being pulled by that four up team. That's Mr. Stein above there. We sure appreciate his hand too. Hey, that's Key's battery. Look at that good sight right there. Let me ask you this. How many fans of the Second Amendment do we have in Hey, it's worthy of being protected. No other country has an amendment like that. The Second Amendment. This is kind of our representation of how we feel about the Second Amendment. We like placing these guns over here and firing them on. Many thanks to Key's Batteries for all y'all do. Or perhaps no flag was more defined than this one, showing a cannon and the challenge of Hunt and Taylor. In late September of 1835, the Mexican Garrison in San Antonio sent a few men to the to recover a cannon that had been granted to the town. 
The citizens of Gonzales denied the request. The Mexican sent dragoons under Captain Francisco Castaneda on the back of the be return. As word of the conflict spread, a group of 200 armed Texans was formed. Two women in Gonzales, Cynthia Burns and Evelyn DeWitt, painted this flag on a cotton cloth depicting the cannon, the Lone Star, and a clear tone to the Mexicans. The Mexican troops moved north to Gonzales. The Texans decided that they had to attack before the Mexican force grew larger and stronger. They crossed the river that evening, formed their battle line to surprise the Mexicans at dawn on October the 2nd of 1835. The battle that day was short. When the Texans opened fire, the Mexicans withdrew. This flag, perhaps better than anything else, captures the defiant, independent spirit of Texans that exists to this day. By the mid-1830s, the idea of independence from Mexico was gaining widespread support in Texas. This growing thing became a movement, and its followers were known as independence radicals. Captain Scott was one of the independence radicals. These men were against negotiation, dialogue, and delay. They supported an immediate declaration of independence from Mexico. Scott had this flag made, which promptly featured his answer to the issues in Texas at that time, and that was independence. He realized that independence meant war, and he was ready for the fight. Captain Scott and his company of 30 men reported to San Felipe, the capital of Austin's colony, and they were deplored to Goliad. That's the Captain Scott flag. Representatives of the 13 settlements in Texas met at San Felipe de Austin, the headquarters of Austin's colony, in November of 1835 to form a provisional government. The council stopped short of declaring independence from Mexico, but instead they declared allegiance to the 1824 Mexican Constitution. This was a wise move intended to clearly express their desire for basic rights, but at the same time hopefully avoid war, which many felt they were unprepared for. They were willing to remain part of Mexico as long as they enjoyed the rights of the 1824 Constitution. To make people aware of Santa Ana's disregard for the Constitution and their support for it, this variation of the Mexican flag was made. The clear and strong message to Santa Ana. The flag was a bold of defiance and against the Mexican dictator. This was a flag which flew over the Texans at the Battle of the Alamo. And we all remember the cry, remember the Alamo. The defiant spirit of Texas was capturing the imagination of many of the people in the United States. Jonah Troutman, an 18-year-old girl from Macon, Georgia, made this flag for a group of Georgians who were going to Texas to support the Texas independence movement. While it was not made by a Texan, it clearly captured the spirit of the Texans and their willingness to die for the cause. This flag was raised when the Georgians arrived at Valesco. It was an inspirational symbol in the desperate time between the Battle of, San, uh, Battle of the Alamo and the victory at San Jacinto. Jonah Troutman is remembered as a hero to this day. She died on July the 23rd of 1879, and her per portrait hangs in the state capitol. This flag captures a theme of the American Revolution, victory or death, which had made, been made famous in a speech by Patrick Henry. That's the Troutman flag. The first constitutional convention declared Texas is independent from Mexico, wrote the first Republic of Texas Constitution, and appointed its first leaders. During the session, Lorenzo de Zavala designed the flag for the new republic. This flag would be considered the first official flag of the Republic of Texas. This flag, again, is a symbol of defiance. It shows a lone star labeled Texas, just in case anyone wondered what the lone star represented. A committee of five delegates, all signed up to the Texas Declaration of Independence, was selected, and their choice for a new flag was approved by the convention on May 11th in 1836. That's the Zavala flag, better known as the first flag of the Republic. In November of 1835, the General Council of Texas commissioned the Republic of Texas Navy. The first ships in the Texas Navy was the Independence Cruise.
The first Lone Star Flag of Texas was created by Sarah Dotson for her husband Arcalius, a member of the Texas Volunteers. Arcalius' company marched under the Dotson flag to San Antonio, and they fought under this flag during the siege of San Antonio and the Texans' capture of the Alamo. That's the Dotson flag. In December of 1836, the new Texas government approved the recommendation of David Burnett for a new design for the national flag of Texas. The flag was inspired by the 1810 Bonnie Blue flag of West Florida. On March the 3rd of 1837, the Republic of Texas under this flag was recognized by the United States as an independent nation. That's the Burnett flag. Led by General Sam Houston, the Texian Army defeated General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana's Mexican Army at the Battle of San Jacinto, a fight that lasted only 18 minutes. The victory ended the Texas Revolution, which began in October of 1835 when the first shot was fired at the Battle of Gonzales. The outcome of the San Jacinto Battle of Texas is that the and forged a brand new nation. Zuber, the last surviving member of the family of the Zuber. And with Santa Ana's surrender, Texas gained its independence and became a sovereign nation. With this newfound independence, it was only logical to create the federal flag. In 1839, the flag that we now associate with Texas was designed and approved. The flag maintained its own star day. Hey, if you're a proud Texan, if you love your state, cheer on the star flag of Texas. Hey, let me try that one more time. If you're a proud Texan, make a little noise. where we were made today. Folks, we still have an awesome republic, a constitutional republic. We must hold on to it, fight for it. And I'm going to take the time right now to make it. Republic. We may be in trying times right now, but I do have a lot of faith in our people to make up the great United States of America. When it's time for your time to vote, please do research. Vote for those candidates that support and protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. Folks, would you welcome onto the field the flag of the United States of America.